Hello, hello, hello. This is Carol Carter, and welcome to Mike Cobb's Offshore Investment Report. Tremendous, tremendous uh, program today because we're going to be talking about this article, okay? Okay, that folks are putting into effect Plan B. You're the Offshore Club members. You're the ones with Mike Cobb who originated Plan B. So let's talk to the expert about it. Mike, what do you think of that article? Hey, Carter. Uh, I, I love that article. You know, you uh, you really hit the nail on the head with it because it, to just sum it up real briefly, you know, th th there's there's a group of people out there who who are elites. They're very, very wealthy. And they're they are all making their plan B's every last one. Of them, right, Mike. I mean, you know, and and and, and so, I mean, it, it's this idea. I mean, some of them are planning on taking a rocket ship to somewhere else. Right. I mean, that's like, you know, whoever those people are, you know, some of them are buying old missile silos in, in the Midwest and the, in, in the Dakotas. Right. And that's they're right. turning those missile silos into underground survival plan B bunkers. Right. But those yeah. things start at a couple million bucks and go up. Right. So, I mean, there's like yeah. the really, really wealthy have already been planning. They're already thinking about it. I mean, they, they like to they like to make fun of the prepper, the preppers, right? Because you know the the guy can afford you know a few thousand dollars to put some food in his basement or whatever, right? Let's make fun of those guys. But in the meantime, you know, let let's buy an underground bunker up in Dakota or figure out how we're going to get on a rocket ship and, and leave when things really get crazy. Or 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 as you wrote in your article, spend a million or two dollars or euros or whatever it happens to be to get a second passport somewhere else, right? Yeah. So they're they're they are definitely taking care of themselves for sure. And I yeah. think what your article really points out, Carter, is that it's actually possible for, for the common man, you know, Absolutely. to take care of ourselves. And, and maybe it is, you know, maybe it is having food in your basement and, you know, being a prepper, right? I think there's, there's, look, I was a boy scout, right? Be prepared, right? I mean, that's so fundamental. Right? I like Be that. Prepared, right? Be prepared, right? And so prepper is about being prepared. Um, but, you know, I think there's, there's this idea too, that, that maybe we need to have a, a different kind of plan B that gets us, you know, security outside our home country, right? Gives us an alternative, gives us a way to do something just a little bit different if things totally go off the rails. And, and you know, I look, Carter, I, I, I hope, just like when I buy health insurance, I hope I never need it. Like, I'm not praying for the day I have a heart attack so I can get best value out of my medical insurance, right? Like, no way. Like I hope that my health insurance money is 100% wasted, right? And I think the same thing's true with, with being a plan B and being prepared, right? I yeah. hope that my plan B, my second residency outside the United States, which I have for me and my family, I hope that's totally wasted. I hope it never goes to use, right? Because that means bad things are happening. Horrible things are happening. And, and I don't want those things to happen because they're going to be bad and horrible, right? But if that happens, right. I will be very glad I have a plan B outside my home country. And, and yeah, that's what I, your and article I, talks about, Carter, is, is you know, it, it, it's not just the realm of the rich elites, right? It can be the realm of, of almost anyone. Yeah. And I think, I think now when we talk plan B at the offshore club, okay, we talk dread and dream, okay? Yeah. The dread is, you know, the escaping the horror. The horror has already started in this country. Let's not make believe about anything when the president of the united states establishes a ministry of truth at the department mm. of justice that's yeah. bad yeah. stuff you know, yeah that's, that's pretty that's scary well yeah. but right our folks look and say we have a plan b dream and and that is and you are the expert at making those dreams come true i think most people you know you have grand pacific a grand bayman you have your building in honduras the reef um, in, in El Salvador and El Zante, gorgeous Mike Cobb communities. And the folks are going to move there. It's yeah, it's somewhat to escape the horror show that is America now. And, you know, I get, I get hundreds of emails a week from people, Mike, and they say, Carter, get me out of here. Where do yeah. I go? And yeah. you respond to some of them, which is fantastic. Folks, imagine the guy who owns the most beautiful residential resorts in the Caribbean, and he responds directly to you and says, come on, I'll introduce you to people. I'll show you around. That's fantastic. Yeah. And that that is what I think um, the offshore club members are looking at. And, and let me put it in perspective. I don't want to dominate everything. Anyway, yeah. Here's what is going to happen. OK, here's what's going to happen. 
it's not just a matter of saying, okay, I'm going to move down there and live like Jose and Juanita and Jose Lita and Raul. No, here's what's going to happen. And you know it because you have already created this scenario. Folks, when, when people move from England, they didn't come over here and say, well, they're Indians, so I'm going to set up a teepee. No, <laughs> you're going to find, folks, did you know that Boston is named after Boston in England? Birmingham, Birmingham in England. I live in York, Pennsylvania, named after York. They're going to set up York and Lancaster and Birmingham in right here. All these places, they're going to have town, gorgeous towns named York and and and, and, and Lancaster. I'm gonna name one after you, Carter. Carter Clusville. Town. Clusville. Oh, Clusville. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but they already do with Grand Pacific. I mean, look at this, yeah. folks. You cannot live any better than that. And Mike, that's where I think th th this this th this outflux, if you if I can say it, are going. And you know, yeah. because you're the one providing the homes. Yeah. Well, you know, Carter, you mentioned like and you get you get hundreds of emails and 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 you do forward me a bunch of them. And and, and I respond personally to them because yeah. here's here's what's important to me. Look, you know, obviously we're a company. You know, we've got shareholders. I have a board of directors. I mean, you know, we're a company and I have a fiduciary yeah. and financial responsibility to my shareholders, my board of directors. Right. But 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 it's not the mission. Like the mission of our company is not to make money. The mission of our company is to help serve folks who want to move overseas or, or maybe not move own property overseas, because look, yeah. a lot of the plan B people actually buy an investment property, a vacation property. They use it a little bit. They put it in a rental program. It cash flows for them. And then it just sits out there on the side in case they ever really need it. Now, yeah. some people do move. I mean, some people we have full time residents. We have. Gosh, Carter, I think we have like 60, 70 full-time residents at Grand Pacifica right now and, right. and another maybe 20, 30 ready to move as soon as their homes are complete. We have, I think, 77, 80 homes under construction right now uh, as well. So, so we have a village. We have full-time residents. But, but, but see, our mission, our mission is to serve people who want to own a property overseas. And, and, and when you introduce me to somebody like that, I take that very seriously, right? It, it here's somebody who's thinking about owning a property overseas. How can I get them introduced to the right people in our organization who can help them really do it well? And and I just want to hold uh, I want to hold up one thing. You're always holding up stuff, Carter. I'm going to hold something up too here. Look over <laughs> top of it. This is our consumer resource guide, okay? And this is a document that we provide to anyone who asks for it. Good. And it is, it's not a sales brochure. It's truly a consumer resource guide. It's how Good. do you buy property overseas? Ask the right due diligence questions. Look, and, and Carter, we talk about, you know, you and I are big advocates of freedom, right? I love freedom. And, yeah. and, and but, but the flip side of freedom is personal responsibility, right? Yes. And so when we leave the United States or Canada, where we're in this nest, this bubble of big brother, which on one hand we go, oh, boo, hiss, big brother. But but like lemon laws, consumer protections, uh, all the all, all the kinds of, of, of nanny state things that, that protect you, the consumer, from the seller. So the US and Canada, we are a seller beware environment. And when we go overseas, we're going to a buyer beware environment. And we don't know how to think, right? And, and, yeah. and what that really requires, yeah. I just heard, I was interviewed on Bitcoin Magazine uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I don't remember. Anyway, um, and 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 one of the guys that was interviewing me uh, uh, used the word radical personal responsibility, and I asked him, I'm saying, hey, dude, can I borrow that? That is brilliant. <laughs> radical personal responsibility, right? And so that's the flip side of freedom. When we, you know, when we we love the freedom, but we have to be radically personally responsible. Problem is, we don't always know how to do that in a foreign sure. environment, right? So anyway, so. My mission, my mission, personal mission, the mission of our company is to help consumers know what they need to know, how to change how we think when we buy property overseas. Because if we do that, 99.9% .9 of the people who buy a property overseas are not going to buy it from us. I get it. I mean, it might not be that much. We, yeah. we might get like 0.1% or 0.01%. I don't know, some yeah. minuscule fraction of the yeah. amount of offshore business, right? 
Right. But if those 99.9% or whatever that number is, end up with a property they love, have an incredible experience, write home to their friends and family about it. What we've really done is raise the tide that will lift our ship too, right? And, yeah. and so my yeah. mission, my mission, Carter, which is why when you send me an introduction, I answer it personally, right? Incredible. Is because I want people who buy property overseas to do it right, to do it well, and have a magnificent experience whether it's one of our communities or whether it's somebody else's. And, and, and that's why I do it, Carter. And, and I appreciate the introductions and I appreciate what you're doing to get the word out. By the way, you write the articles like this, you know, second residency plan B, second passport kind of stuff, right? You write a ton of articles. You have a ton of people on here on your oh, programming yeah. Yeah. That, that talk about how to do it and how to do it well. And, 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 and that's why we are going to name a neighborhood after you one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> have to figure out which one it is, but anyway, yeah, that's where I want to move. Yeah, that, and you know, yeah, let me let me add the there's an article coming out tomorrow, a Clues Views article at Offshore.club, that it's called uh, Yahoo for Twisted Sister, and it points out that everything you've just said that it, it, you know the Twisted Sister song. Yeah, is it, uh, we're I'm not gonna, gonna take it. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> we'll, we'll put yeah. There, maybe Gary, you can cut that out or or not. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so what 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 I point out is in this article from Business Insider that we just showed people, you mm -hmm. know, they talk about the wealthy elite and all that's fine. And but they say that people are leaving because they're afraid of pandemic, climate change and conflict. Well, one out of three ain't bad. If I were to the author, yeah. I'd say, hey, one out of three got Ted Williams into the Hall of Fame. So that ain't bad. But it ain't yep. pandemic and climate change. <laughs> those, those, those frauds are those hoaxes are everywhere. It's well, the four yeah. F's, not the three C's. Four F's. Yeah, it's let me uh, the four freedom, family, faith, and fortune. That's okay. what people and that's what yeah. they find. Let me hold up my faith at Grand yeah. Pacifica. But Carter, Carter, you have you have definitely defined one of the key points. Of, of, of something I've written some articles about, you know, and it's this notion of why do people move overseas? Yeah. They're either running from something, you know, pandemic, climate change, social disorder, divorce. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, there are lots of things people run from, right? When they move overseas, that's running from, but there's also running towards to. and the four F's, the four F's yes. are actually what you run to when you yeah. buy a property and when you own a property overseas, right? It's the running towards and, and, you know, but both types of folks are, 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 are a part of our business, yeah. um, but the people running towards, you know, something tend to be people who are much more optimistic. They're, they're certainly, um, they're all, well, they're all adventurous souls to some degree, but, but they're much more optimistic and they're looking, they're hopeful. How's that? They're optimistic and they're hopeful. Here's, here's what I want to achieve by doing this, as opposed to here's what I'm getting away from. By the way, the, again, we, we serve both folks very, very well, right? Because yeah. it's the same kind of thing. Um, but it is nice when people are running towards something like those four Fs, Carter. I think you've, I think you've nailed it on, on that. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just exciting. When I look at Grand Pacific, when I look at Grand Bayman, what you're doing in Honduras, the, the reef, El Zante, Costa Rica, Please, all your residential right? resort communities. Yeah. That's what I'm running to. And, it, you know, yeah. the to be honest with you, for some, I live in York, Pennsylvania. If I walk five blocks from my home, you know, I have a choice. Go ahead and shoot myself in the head or walk five blocks away and let somebody else do it. That's, you know, I'm sorry. That's the reality. And so that is when I go here, it's like everything that once was America is right there now. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah. The four yeah. F's are right there, which, which you have done a remarkable job on. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? I think it's because that's what you came from. You are one of us. You weren't born with the silver spoon in your mouth, if I'm not mistaken. No. Correct. My, both my parents were teachers. I grew up in northwest Pennsylvania in a small, you know, rural agricultural area about an hour north of Pittsburgh. So, yeah. I, yeah. You know, I, yeah, which is fantastic. I, you know, I, I, grew up, I grew up in a small town, right? I grew up in a small town of maybe, I, I make up the number. 500 people, 300 people. I don't know. Like it was a small town an hour north of Pittsburgh. And yeah. we lived right on the edge of town, but it really was 
I mean, it was a village. I mean, it was really it was a, a village. Everybody knew everybody, you know, maybe not intimately, but like you knew almost everybody in that town by sight, right? Yeah. It was, and yeah, it was great. And so we've, we've created a very similar community, a village concept where we build, right? I mean, it, it's, it's people get to know one. Can I just tell one quick story? So, Absolutely. you know, we, we, uh, at Grand Pacifica, we had one of our residents actually tragically hit and run over two little children, uh, maybe a 15 month old and a, maybe a four year old kid. And they were both hospitalized for some period of time, one of them for a day or two, the other one for a, almost a month, right? It's pretty serious head injury, stuff like that. Great news. They're both okay. They're, they Good. both, yeah, recovered and all that kind Good. of stuff. But Good. the community rallied around the family of the children, but also the husband and wife of the guy who ran over them. I mean, you think about the guilt that that guy has. Yes. I mean, you know, there's a lot of glare in the wind. I mean, whatever. I mean, it, you know, it was kind of a no fault thing, right? But yeah. anyway, point is, is this guy was guilt stricken. He'd run over a couple kids that are in the hospital, right? The family obviously has their kids in the hospital. So the community rallied. And, and really provided incredible emotional, financial, I mean, financial support as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, to, so, so, you know, what? When, when, you know, it's in those moments when you can really see the, the, the genuine article. I don't know what else to call it. Right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of yeah. times community, when people bicker, uh, you know, you don't mow your grass last week or whatever the heck it was. Right. I mean, nee, 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 nee. okay. But, 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 but when, but when something like that happens, that's all gone. Like it's people wonderful. come to get right. That's yeah. the genuine article of community, and it was yeah. it was horrible that it happened, but the but the resultant of of what happened to see people rallying was incredibly heartwarming and 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 wonderful. So anyway, yeah, that that's what we're doing, Carter. We're building small towns. We're building places where people know their neighbors, care about their neighbors, don't always agree with their neighbors, but deeply right. care about their neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is perfect. You know, the, the, it is, there's, the, you know, Chaz Palmateri, the movie Bronx Tale, one of the greatest movies ever made. He has a podcast, Old School, okay, where he mm -hmm. talks about what it was like growing up in the America that was like you just described. And it's kind of like you have created Old School in the New World. Yeah. 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 Which is fantastic. Let mm -hmm. me, and Claude, I know you got to run. We're right I do. I got to go to the airport. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to Rhode Island to speak to the Rhode Island Association of Realtors. That that's my that's my meeting tomorrow morning. So that's fantastic. I think I think last yeah. week when we talked, you were speaking to the National Association. I was. Right? I do a lot of speaking to uh, various realtor associations around the country. Yeah, which is fantastic. Let me read you one sentence and get your quick comment. This advisors. You see more American inquiry over the past three years than in the previous 20 years combined. What's your comment on that? Carter, you cut out. I don't know if it's your internet or my internet, but and you're actually frozen on the screen. So I I, I could hear you saying something. Repeat it, please. Okay. Comment on this sentence from a guy who has a company called Day Sun Advisors. They advise people, help people move offshore. He says he said. More American inquiries in the past three years than the previous 20. What's your comment oh, on that? Of course. Of course. You know, <laughs> look, I mean, you, you know, and people, again, this, this has a lot to do with the running from, right? But people, a lot of people in their minds have had this idea of doing something overseas. But when you had COVID, you had the lockdowns from COVID, you had all the, you know, I would call government repression, right? I mean, there, there, was, there was serious impact on COVID yeah. in in society, politically and, and in civil society, right? When you had this incredible levels of, of, of impact on the one hand, and then saw the politicians running around without masks, right? I mean, like the hypocrisy was exposed. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean visibly, visibly exposed, right? Yeah. And so you had this incredible hypocrisy, you know, the elites, right? Who are like, we don't care what you think, we're gonna do what we want, but oh yeah, you better wear a mask or we're gonna throw your butt in jail, right? So yeah, right. So all of a sudden people are like, Oh my gosh, like I really need to do something. So so I'm not surprised at all. I don't know the data. I believe that data, it sounds very reasonable to me. Um, you know, our business grew grew fivefold, fivefold Carter Incredible. Incredible. over that same period. So yep. again, we saw it in reality, people saying, Enough. 
I got to have a plan B. Some people said, I got to have a plan A. I'm moving. Like I said, we have 70, I don't know, 80 houses under construction right now. And we're expecting somewhere between 20 and 30 of those people to become full-time residents. Right. Fantastic. So, so like, I mean, they're, that's a plan A. That's not a that's plan, plan B. A. Yeah. That's plan A. Right. Plan a. So, so this, this is real Carter and, and, and thank goodness. And I'll just wrap up with this and, 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 and just say that, you know, <laughs> thank goodness for the last 26 years, our company is 26 years old, right? Yeah. Thank goodness for the last 26 years, we built the, the financial infrastructure, the human infrastructure, you know, the, the, the communities, right? The physical infrastructure that's there to be able to grow our business fivefold and receive this new number of people who want to be a part of what we're doing and be a part of this 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 global migration, right? And so yeah. thank goodness we were ready. But we we were ready, we are ready. And uh and and I don't see that tide slowing down at all. In fact, I, I think it's actually uh, uh speeding up. Um so anyway, we're here to serve folks when when they're That's ready right. and, and they want to have their plan B in place or plan A. All right, folks, there you have it. Straight from the mouth of the offshore oracle. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Thanks for taking care. And thanks for all you're doing. And Absolutely. we'll talk to you again next week. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. There you go, folks. Plan A, plan B, whichever it is, make your move to the good life at a great price in the sun, sand, the surf, south of the border. Let's do this thing.